Knox Level Health Cooperative is receiving this honor. As I look into the crowd, I can't help but wonder which student sitting here today will return in the future and also be inducted into the Oshkosh North Hall of Fame. It is now my pleasure to turn to the program over to Emmeline Linsky, who will introduce our Hall of Fame inductee. Clearly, Dr. Glonick's devotion, passion, and integrity are evident in his work, and his exemplary representation of the Oshkosh community is highly admirable. He is an inspiring role model whose significant accomplishments clearly qualify him for the Oshkosh North High School Hall of Fame honor. At this time, would you please join me in welcoming Dr. Emmett Vonick. Thank you. Why? Um, first of all, I just want to say just thank you, Spartans, for, for having me here. My family, my friends. I can do this. <laughs> I get into it. I, I would sit up in the stands, kind of maybe watching that, and I would have never thought that that could have been me or should have been me. Um, I graduated here with a 2.01, um, which isn't bad. Um, and that's why it's really crazy for me to be here right now. Um, 26 years ago, I, I was in trouble. I was in turmoil. I had a lot of things in my life that were falling apart and I could have easily fell through the cracks. As I say, you never know how far something, how far reaching something that you do say or think today will affect the millions of lives tomorrow. It's an important piece because there are some pivotal people in my life that made me look at myself maybe a little bit differently, because at the time, again, I was in trouble. I was, I was a rascal. I was, uh, you know, I think the, the one thing that I really had going for me at that time was sport. I was an athlete, and the discipline of sport and being around my colleagues and, or my teammates helped me with boundaries. When I was here during this period of time, I counted, I lived in 13 different houses. 13 different homes. I was shuffled around a lot. But I made a commitment, I made a decision at a young time in my life that I was gonna get my education, no matter what it took. And it took a lot at that time for me. There's people kind of coming in and out of my life periodically, it was a struggle. It was a battle for me to, to do this. A lot of people paid a, you know, played a big part in that. Recently, I had um, a client of mine, somebody that I, a consulting coach, say, Emmett, uh, not everybody was born with a silver spoon in their mouth. As if it was a jab. And what I know is like, uh, my time here is like a roller coaster. Um, you guys picture a roller coaster, right? How many people like, like the roller coaster, like love the roller coaster? Raise your hand if you love the roller coaster, like the ride, right? Now the other half, how many of you like are terrified, hate it? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> and this is kind of, when I was here in school, I don't want to pretend to be able to relate to you because this is 26 years ago, I'm old now. Um, it was a roller coaster, but here's the interesting thing. With the roller coaster, it's the same exact ride, but what's the difference? It's your experience and your perception, things going on internally that's allowing you to enjoy it or maybe panic, freak out, and get turmoil out of that. But it's the same ride. And what I found is that the people that came in and out of my life really helped me navigate this roller coaster a little bit easier. I want to thank. I want to thank the parents and the administration. I want to thank the community of Oshkosh for helping me get here. It, it takes a village, and you guys have helped me, so thank you so much. Uh, oh my God, the mayor's here. 
<laughs> this is awesome. Um, Dawn Pomeranian, she helped coordinate this with my family. I appreciate that. Uh, Miss Kiff Meyer. Um, I love on the page, on, on the school page, her, her quote is, um, once a Spartan, always a Spartan. I am a Spartan, and I am here with you. <laughs> and I, it was very difficult, I will, I will say this, I have not been, I have not come back often because of, when I was here it was very difficult, and you guys are making it easy for me to come back, and I appreciate that. My amazing, powerful, and beautiful wife, Lisa. Thank you so much. My incredible nieces and nephews, Connor, Kaylee, Colin, Cade, and all of them, I love you so much. My brother Mike, my big bro, um, he too experienced some of these difficulties and challenges. His roller coaster was different though. I will forever be grateful for, to you, Mike, and your beautiful wife, Keely, and my nieces and nephews. I love you. My incredible sister, Angela, you've been through it, Beryl. And I'm so proud of you and what you've done. Our family has struggled. And you are an amazing mom to my beautiful nieces and nephews. I love you. And my mom, she's, she's had her challenges. Not perfect, nor am I. And I do not want to pretend to be perfect by no means. I'm a flawed person. But I'm here today with you guys. Officer Chad Ewing and your family. One of the homes that I've spent time in, like another brother, Traveling around from city to city, different wrestling meets, they gave me food when I didn't have it. There's a time, there was a time when I was on my own, living on my own, um, actually with my big brother Mike, who's a year older than me, and everybody was gone. And I was there for weeks by myself. I remember sleeping behind wrestling mats until school the next day. I remember sleeping in the men's locker room. I remember dump, going into a dumpster to get three-day-old donuts. I remember going to a food pantry, getting food for myself. I remember paying, I think it was Piggly Wiggly or Sentry back then, using food stamps to pay a classmate for the food that I needed. Times were tough. I want to thank the Ewing family, Steve, Connie, and all the friends, the Horvath family, for being here. You never know how far reaching something you may say will help. There's a time here when typically people, because I was an athlete, I was, I was more like a, wired like a tough, like you're tough. <coughs> you, you guys know what I mean? He's a tough guy. I didn't, I didn't want to be a tough guy. I, I wanted everything out of life, and at one point, I mean, I, it was, I was not on track to graduate, and at one point, a teacher, teachers, please listen, I did not see myself as somebody that was influential. I looked at myself as a troublemaker, a rascal. Great teachers can have a huge impact, and you have to know your words matter. John Gremmer, he was a teacher here at the time, and he kicked me out of his class numerous times in chemistry for, you know, whatever it was I was doing. I was having a hard time. And he pulled me aside one day out in the classroom, and he said this to me, and I don't know if this class still exists. He says this, very seriously, and I go, oh, here we go. He's gonna try to fix me or yell at me. He goes, we're starting a new class. Um, it's a pilot class, so we're gonna try it out. There's a handful of kids that we're gonna use for this. Do you mind helping out with this class? Well, what is it? It was something about leadership, a leadership class. He goes, I see something in you that you can't even see yourself. 
You're a leader, and you don't even know it, and you need to be part of this class. It was at that point in my senior year that I started looking at myself differently and decided, I made a commitment that I was gonna go in that direction, that I wasn't gonna be the troublemaker. I wasn't gonna be that person that I told myself I was. Because he opened up that opportunity in my mind to make me think that that was possible. So wherever you're at in your journey, in your roller coaster, you need to know that you got it within you. And that's what brings this up. The power in you, you have it, is greater than anything in front of you. Any obstacle, any test, any challenge, any circumstance you're in, any conflict, any frustration, you have something so powerful inside of you, but you have to dig it out. Lean on other people to pull it out of you if you need to. I needed that, I needed help, I didn't know it. I was calling out for help, and some of you listed, Gene Pollock, thank you so much. You pulled it out of me. <laughs> Emmeline, you did an amazing job, didn't she? The introduction here. She, she's got an amazing future, great job. I remember in class one time, more again, a little bit of a troublemaker. Um, I had to give a talk about some type of geography or so social studies where we had to describe some things on a map. And I was trying to describe this word, but I don't know when you guys came up here, I don't know if you ever, did you feel nervous at all? Like a little bit like anxious? Well, I felt like that when I was in front of my class. I couldn't even, like my throat started choking up, very much like now. <laughs> my throat started choking up. I started like getting red and I was paralyzed in front of my classmates. Anybody ever experienced something like that? And I was trying to describe this word and the teacher thought that I was messing around. She thought that I was being that rascal because I couldn't pronounce Chicago, Chicago. I couldn't pronounce Chicago because of that fear inside of me. And she took me out and she's like, why are you messing around? I'm like, I was just panicking and freaking out. And what I decided was, you know, in those moments, what I wanted to do is I wanted to face those fears. I wanted to face the things that I thought were impossible, the things that I was struggling with and the things that I was having challenges with. And so one thing that I think we all do, we can agree, like what's the worst that could happen? Alligators? <laughs> Alligators could eat you, yeah. What's the worst that could happen? And I started changing the, the question. I started changing the question from what's the worst that could happen? I do that though, what I do is I face that and I walk it out. It's a practice called stoichism. What is the worst that could happen? Face those alligators. Apparently, you're supposed to grab them by the mouth and close their mouth. And so you can imagine, walk through what the worst that could happen, and if you can get yourself comfortable with that moment, you will succeed. The better question is, is what's the best that will happen? What if you rock it? What if you pull it off? What if whatever you're going for, the ACT or the college degree or the trade organization you're going in, you may not go into um, a higher education, you may go into the military, but what's the best that will happen? And start walking that out. Start speaking into yourself and start speaking into others because there is a power in you that's greater than anything in front of you. I'm gonna, write, I'm gonna try to land this plane here. I think there's a time there's a time and a season for everything, you guys. I believe that. There's a time to work hard. There's a time to put your head down and focus. There's, there's a time to grind it out, study, whatever it is. There's a season for everything. But right now with the, with the turmoil of our times, I mean, we are in chaos, in crisis, in the element in the era of our times, we are challenged as families, as communities. I think the time and the season now is we need to be kind. 
We need to enrich each other, and we need to speak and pour in positive to each other. Now's the time and now's the season for that. And you know who's gonna lead that next generation to be kind? Is you. You're the leaders. We need you to step up. You're gonna be the authority. There's a season for everything and right now it's to be kind. I wanna thank you Oshkosh, the community, the YMCA where I took showers, the Boys and Girls Club where I got food, the pantries, my family and friends, the people that surrounded me and helped me get to the next level. I wanna love you and appreciate you. Thank you Oshkosh, I am a Spartan. Thank you Spartans. proclaim Friday, March 15, 2019, as Dr. Emmett Blonick Day in the city of, city of Oshkosh, and together with the citizens of the city of Oshkosh, congratulate Dr. Emmett Blonick on his many outstanding accomplishments, his devotion and dedication to his field, and this well-deserved recognition of his achievements. Doctor.